Hello to you beautiful entrepreneurs out there. I cannot wait to get started on this subject because really, what do you understand when it comes to marketing? So we're going to talk about marketing. There's a couple of things that will cross over into sales, but I plan to do another video just on sales. But this video is just on understanding marketing. So my name is Marilyn Crump. I am a business developer, marketing strategist, mentor, program designer, anything fun, you name it. That is what I do. I've been in business since the year 2000, and I love helping other entrepreneurs make their way through all of these wonderful options so that they can create a life that they've always desired. So are you ready for some fun? <laughs> because I feel like if you can understand this and the basic core of what marketing is, then you, my friend, are going to be so successful. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so what do you understand about marketing? And I feel like sometimes, you know, people are mixing a lot of different thoughts together and then it becomes confusing and you don't really quite know what to do. People are chasing the latest trends. But foundationally, there are things that you should definitely be aware of. So grab a notebook, write some stuff down. I go over all of this stuff in my other programs as well, just because this is the foundation. So marketing exists in many different ways. It could be the way you present something, the way you talk to somebody, the brand is part of marketing, your ads are part of marketing, your website, your presence on social media, all that good stuff. But those are tools in getting to know the people that you're serving. So marketing is communicating the right things to the right people at the right time. So if we get started, the way I like to look at everything is that there is a certain like category that people fall into. And what I'm drawing here is a big bullseye. OK, so you have five, four, three, two and one. It represents to me the number and volume of people that could potentially be reached at those different tiers. So I call this relationship tiers to marketing. And um, I love the motif of a dream catcher. It looks like a bullseye to me, but you know, you filter different things out. Um, the most current terms that you hear out there is funneling, but I also feel like some people aren't really quite explaining funnels, right? It becomes more of like a sales push. And marketing is uh, a kind of a love letter approach, right? So. And you're like, no, I don't understand. <laughs> so, okay, all right, I'll get started. Okay, relationship tier five, the one, the big one that I explained. So that's the outer portion of the bullseye. A lot of people can reside in your particular relationship tier five. Okay, so in tier five, what you have are people who are just getting to know you, acquaintances as they call them. So if you look at your Facebook page, you have tons of acquaintances, LinkedIn, all those people who barely know you, they're acquainted with you, they may have met you once, you may have just friended each other on Facebook or Instagram. Those are all acquaintances. But those, that matters too, because outside of the tiers, they have no knowledge of you, okay? So it's kind of outside of your particular solar system, you wanna look at it as planets, okay? People who don't have any knowledge of you, of course, you're not gonna reach them and marketing is not gonna hit them. Tier five, people getting to know you. Think of it as dating. So you just met somebody. Okay, what is it in tier five that's going to keep them there acquainted with you? So if you're uh, on social media and you're marketing, don't spam people because then they'll say, you know what? I'm going to block this person. I'm going to leave this person's uh, circle. And then they're floating off into nowhere land. So in order to keep them there, keep them interested, your goal is to progress them to a relationship tier four. So of course, it's easy to understand uh, tier five. What can you do in tier five? Well, you can do things to really showcase your brand so that we do become more interested because in relationship tier four, interested, something about you in tier five really grabs my attention. So in tier five, you want to create marketing pieces that are attractive. Okay, if I'm just meeting you for the first time, hmm, I want to get to know you more because of what is 
pulling me in? What is it that's attracting me to want to learn more about you and your brand? So showing up consistently. So if you're always networking, maybe you go to the same networking group and be consistent there because then people are like, okay, I'm aware of this person. I'm getting more and more acquainted. I love blogs. Blogs are a great way for people to get acquainted with your brand, uh, making sure that you sponsor some stuff. So if you look at people who sponsor as a way of marketing their business, if you look at banks, real estate agents, they'll sponsor different things because they want to make as many acquaintances as possible so that if their marketing is attractive enough, maybe people are like willing to go and check it out some more. So if you're a, a person that likes to go to vendor events and you're actually like maybe selling a product yourself, make sure that table is attractive. Then people who aren't familiar with you yet, but they're you're catching their eye is going to like stop at your table and get to know a little bit more about you. So same thing with social media. What's going to make people stop and look at our Instagram, our LinkedIn? What is it about that in tier five that you could be doing and making sure you, you maximize that tier? Because from there, then it's easy to progress people into the next stages. So if I'm interested, give me something cool, right? Um, again, I'm going to make a video about sales because this is how you can determine what price do I set for certain things and how would people value my product or service. So at a tier four, when you're doing marketing like that, um, you want people to already kind of start understanding what else you have to offer, like knowing a little bit more about how to trust you in a transaction. Tier four people, are kind of on that verge. They're, they can either go back to five or back to three. And what I see from a lot of people is that they have very strong tier five marketing. They're on social media, they're going live, etc. But then they skip right to like a tier two, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, well, actually, let's go to tier two. Okay, I'm going to skip four and three. Invested. Sometimes we're online, especially online marketer, marketers, online entrepreneurs get very excited, right? Like I just met you and now I want you to be super interested in me. And then I want to sell you something very high ticket or very complicated. You're missing tier four and tier three. Tier three is where they're loyal to you. So you got to build loyalty and where you build that really is on tier four. So people are observing you a little bit deeper at tier four because unlike tier five, they're only acquaintances. There's nothing really that's, um, tying them down to you or your brand. But if I'm interested, then I'm willing to kind of invest a little bit more. I know it's tier two would be really invested, but I want to try a sample. You know, um, maybe I'm going to join um, a workshop of yours where you get people moving through like a webinar type of thing and the progression like that. They found out about the webinar. They liked the first thing that they saw. It was attractive. And then when they actually sign up for it and actually attend, it's because they are interested. So then at that moment, it's very cr crucial, is whatever it is that gained their interest that they signed up for or purchased, is it going to keep their interest and want them to become loyal to you? That's where you really have to prove yourself. So if you're looking at your business plan and uh, let's say you uh, get a consultant like me, that's going to be one of the first things that I ask. Like, what is it that you're doing in your marketing that you found to be effective? And um, how often are you doing certain things? And do you have a tier four? And most people are looking at me like, okay, we spend this much on marketing, but I really don't know what it's doing. So that's a, that's a terrible answer, right? Because you're like, oh no, I'm spending all this money and I'm not seeing any return on it. Normally it's because the flow is broken and we will definitely look at fixing that. So for you, fix certain things in tier four. What could be a good tier four? Like I mentioned, it would be actually performance of a really good service, something that's not very um, like high end or like taking up a lot of people's time. If you look at the way people create challenges, like online challenges, that is a tier four experience. Because if I'm going to sign up for a challenge, I'm definitely interested and I want to play. I want to like figure you out. I want to figure out like if you can definitely serve my needs and uh, challenges are a good way to go. 
but they're not the end all be all, right? Like you got to perform it well so that people go, okay, I'm starting to really love what I'm, what I'm doing with this person or this brand. And then they become loyal. And by the time they become loyal to you, that's when you could start really bringing in uh, different options for them to consider. So it could be a membership, a long time uh, membership where they subscribe for a year. Maybe it's a um, kind of a middle of the road coaching package or consulting package. If you're a VA, it could be like a um, sample service, like a package that you could sell at that moment. But remember, they got to be tier three. So what did you do in tier four to get them there? So if you are just doing freebies, Technically, that's just a tier five thing. It's not going to be enough to get most people interested in moving towards loyalty. Okay. Loyalty is earned. And if you're just kind of like making a freebie, just to make a freebie, growing your mailing list, but you're not giving a lot of value in those areas, then most people are like, I'm no longer interested. You know, they kind of float away out into the stratosphere, like I mentioned before. Okay. So your goal is tier four is so important. I can't even highlight that enough for you. Write it down somewhere, put up the number four somewhere. So you say, I'm going to concentrate on what to do during tier four. This is where networking come in, comes into place. A tier four person, you can actually give them like referrals too. You could say, how can I help you? Before I ask you to do um, anything that you may not be um, you know, ready for, let me do something for you. So if you're using these tiers in networking, tier four is where you start giving the referrals first before you can start like um, receiving the referrals, right? So do something to help people. Um, I love podcasts in a way, like people become loyal, um, listening and watching things. Let's say this YouTube, if I do a good job, then maybe you'll subscribe, subscribe and um listen to more things, it's because I'm giving you enough good information, right? So that way I'm working through these relationship tiers so that I can gain and earn your loyalty. So once we have that, and it's almost like, all right, this person is um, in that Goldilocks zone. When they refer somebody else to you, they've already skipped ahead. So what I love is a referral from a tier three person. If um, if that's like, let's say here, like somebody who's my tier three refers somebody who is their tier three as well, then they kind of beeline the tier five and four. They go straight to loyal. That's really cool. That's why certain times affiliate marketing works very well. It's because you're entrusting the person who's an affiliate. Hopefully they're reaching out to people that they're tier three with and it's going to be an easy path towards the sale. So affiliate marketing also relies on all of these things because that's how it works. If your affiliate is always trying to contact people in tier five, well, they're going to have a hard time. They're not going to be very good affiliates. And uh, you yourself, if you're always trying to like convince those who just got to know you to either join your team or purchase something important, um, you're missing tier four. Okay, so if any time marketing is not working, there's probably a missing piece and it's more than likely a high percentage of it is in that tier four level. Now, tier three and tier two, there's actually not much difference in a way, but, you know, you got to earn every step. And to me, um, since I do a lot of consulting and coaching, I tend to think about my tier two people as my best friends, right? So if I'm going to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, I pretty much will do an interview. I will take my time to figure you out because I'm investing a whole lot of my time. You're investing a whole lot of money. And we just need to meet, make sure that we're eye to eye on what's going to be happening. And um, that's a special zone. So if we looked at five, four, three, two, I shouldn't be serving a lot of people at that level just because I don't have that much energy and I really got to pour into that because it's special, right? So the more special it is, the more invested we both are in our time, money, and effort. So tier two is very special. Not all businesses near, need a tier two. So if you don't even have a tier two when it comes to the selling part, then you don't really need 
a tier two when it comes to marketing. So how would you market for a tier two? Well, then those things are more internal marketing pieces. So that's when you would do retarget people who are already in a group of yours or in a mastermind to do something. If you have uh, people who've bought certain products from you before they booked a vacation with you before, um, then you can upsell them into other things because they trust your recommendation. This is a whole lot more of a VIP level, right? So it doesn't matter what industry you're in. These tips really, really work. And these tiers are so foundational that you, if you really understand it, that it's going to be so easy for you to also kind of like determine how much effort you should put into progressing the, the people that you're um, attracting. Okay. And so relationship tier one, that's an ex exclusive partnership. That's that smallest target. Okay. One person, two people, maybe that's a JV partner. Maybe that's somebody who's uh, going, going to spend like a, um, a whole weekend doing like a VIP day, like very, very targeted. Um, and most businesses don't even have that, right? Like, or somebody says, you know, hey, why don't we co-brand together? You really got to consider it. It's like a marriage. So if you're looking at these tiers again, you know, uh, we look at it in the dating sense. So tier five, right? People just meeting you for the first time. Hey, what's up? I saw you from across the room. Thought I'd meet you. Cool beans. All right. See you, see you around. Uh, interested. You know what? I've seen you a few times. I would like to ask you out on a date. Maybe coffee, lunch. Try it out. Tier three. You know what? We've been on these dates. You are something special. I really believe that I just want to date you exclusively. I don't want to Choose anyone else at this moment. Like you're the one I have my eyeball on. Tier two, will you marry me? I want to be engaged to you because I see this going somewhere that's really, really, really special. And we want this time to really kind of huh, live in this zone together, right? Like you got me. I'm pretty much yours, okay? But we just got to take that last step. And tier, tier one, we're married, <laughs> right? Like. I'm yours for life. Here are my children, you know, whatever you do. So think about that because I think um, it gets confusing out there. People are telling you lots of things to consider, um, selling you on more ways to capture more people on your email list. But look, if you're not nurturing that list, if you're not nurturing that community, you're growing, then you're missing a beat, right? Tier four. We want to make sure that you really, really are creating different pieces there that will be of service and of value to kind of then progress into all the things that you want. So hopefully that gave you a quick rundown on like the different pieces of marketing, the things that I love to make sure people know because it matters on how you're going to create the sales, how you're going to pitch something and just the different things that you do in your daily life, because sometimes a lot of people are spending, uh, you know, a lot of time making either TikToks or Instagram stuff, social media posts, and then they're frustrated. Like they think I've been doing all of this stuff. Why isn't it happening? Nah, it's because you only have a tier five marketing plan. So round it all up, making sure you visit every single portion of the relational tiers, relationship tiers. And if you have any question about it, please do not hesitate to contact me. There's many ways for you to learn more about it and really how to implement it. And of course, I'm going to make a video about sales. And if you're in one of my programs, you get to test it out with some accountability and more, really more in-depth training. Consider joining 1K in a day it, we're all about creating promotions and uh, leading you through all these steps. Okay. And we have a beautiful mastermind filled with amazing people. So you're going to have um, a really fun time with marketing instead of like being so low by yourself in marketing. That's it for me for today. I hope you're enjoying this. This is episode two. Please subscribe and find out some more things that I'll be creating and feel free to network with me because it's all about that. If you're an entrepreneur out there, it doesn't matter what space you're in. I have a lot of beautiful people that um, love to collaborate and um, may you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you later.